Running Fever, Episode 376, Dental Health Part 7, Protecting Your Teeth. Welcome to Running a Fever. My name is Michael Davis. This is a podcast about fitness, diet, and medicine. My goal is to live a long, healthy, happy, active life right up to the very end by loving my life enough to make it last as long as possible. This is episode seven in our 10 part series on dental health. If you haven't heard all of them thus far, then go back to the beginning and you can hear all of the uh, episodes in the series. We've already talked about dry mouth, diet, biofilm, genetics, and pH. The objective is not to preach about sweets, brushing, or flossing, but to find the causes of dental health problems, understanding that a lot of these problems are not our fault at all, and may be completely out of our control, like genetics and dry mouth. With this newfound knowledge, we'll have a better idea of what actions to take to improve. And speaking of action, we're at part seven, which is the first of three episodes about what actions we can take to treat our ailments for a healthier mouth. This episode is about protection. The next is about planning. And the final of the three is about whole body health. So let's get into protection. Even if your disease is not your own fault, there are things you can do to address it. There are so many dental products out there, not all of them are right for you. As I always say, it pays to be an expert at your own health. Much of this series is aimed at gaining knowledge about your own oral health. Only when you have such knowledge will you be able to mitigate your risk factors and choose appropriate treatment. In this episode, we'll talk about the goal of balance, pH neutralization by eating less frequency and or raising pH after eating, fluoride, xylitol sweetener, antibacterial, remineralization, and based on each risk factor, match up appropriate strategies to focus on. In general, we are all resistant to change, and some may not want to change their toothpaste or take a wrench to work so you can raise your pH after lunch. But if we're not willing to change what we do, we'll never change the results. I don't know about you, but I don't want to keep getting cavities and crowns. So I'm willing to at least consider making some changes. I hope you are too. It's a balancing act. All over the body, there are organs which require balance. For example, the circulatory system needs a balanced blood pressure. Too high and your blood vessels get stressed and wear out quicker. If it's too low, you don't get the circulation you need. This balance can be fostered by changes in diet, getting exercise and medication. Your oral health needs a similar balance. When you eat is as important as what you eat when it comes to maintaining a healthy pH balance. Frequent meals, snacks, and drinks cause the pH level to drop and you can start losing the minerals in the enamel of your teeth. Restrict your eating and drinking of non-tap water beverages to meal times and don't drag out how long you eat and drink. There are high pH therapies that can be used to address longer times of low pH. Are you prone to low pH? To prevent this, use dental care products with a pH of 8 or 9. If you already have a problem with excessive plaque buildup, you need to ramp that up to between 9 and 11 pH. This can be done by wearing trays with a high pH gel at night. Fluoride is another tool in your dental toolbox. It is a super treatment that addresses three big problems. It strengthens your teeth, it protects against acid attacks, and it reduces acid in the mouth, making it harder for cavity-causing bacteria to grow. Fluoride binds with the mineral material in your tooth enamel during the Stefan response, which we discussed in part six, and forms a more resistant barrier to acid. There are several fluoride treatment products. 0.243% neutral sodium fluoride toothpaste or gel available over the counter or from your dentist. 0.05% neutral sodium fluoride oral rinse available over the counter or from your dentist. 1.1% neutral sodium fluoride toothpaste or gel, that's prescription only. 
and 5% neutral sodium fluoride varnish, prescription only. Young children need smaller amounts of fluoride. Consult your dentist or a pediatric dentist before giving your young child fluoride products. The prescription of fluoride products must be done on an individual basis by your dentist. It is based on your risk of getting cavities. Be sure to have this evaluation to determine the appropriate dose. I have used xylitol myself to prevent dry mouth. It was recommended by my dentist and came in a tab form that you stick to your teeth. Doesn't sound like good practice, but that's how it worked. It was a nice cinnamon flavor. Xylitol is an anti-caries agent. Caries are like small cavities. And it also makes fluoride more effective. It is a sweetener, but it is not often found in over-the-counter products because it is much more expensive than other sweeteners. When you buy a xylitol product, Make sure it has a 10% concentration. It needs that level to be effective. Xylitol works so well because of three factors. One, it cannot be dissolved by bad bacteria like sugar can, so they don't produce the acid they normally would. And two, because they can't digest it, bacteria grow slower and eventually starve. And three, because it is so sweet, Xylitol encourages the production of saliva, which we know is very important to preventing tooth decay. If you already have a cavity-causing or cariogenic biofilm, this needs to be treated immediately. It is more difficult to treat than a normal bacteria infection. Bacteria in biofilm cannot be treated with a course of antibiotics like other infections can. The main treatment for a toxic biofilm is a broad-spectrum oxidizing antibacterial agent capable of penetrating a biofilm, such as sodium hypochlorite. Many other methods have been tried, but they all have harmful side effects. Sodium hypochlorite is available in an oral rinse, but you should discuss with your dentist whether you can benefit from it based on your situation. Believe it or not, sodium hypochlorite mixed with water is the same as household bleach. So obviously it can be dangerous if not used properly. If your mouth is healthy, you will have no mineral loss in your teeth due to the Stefan response. Your saliva does all the work that needs to be done in returning the required minerals to your teeth and rebuilding the enamel lost during eating and drinking. One of the things that must be accomplished when treating caries is treating the mineral loss. The surface of your teeth is a crystalline substance which grows during a process called amylogenesis, which you may remember from the episode on genetics. This is when very small mineral particles floating around are attached to the crystals on your teeth and they bind with them, making your enamel stronger. Along with the minerals are these substances hydroxyapatite and fluorapatite. For them to work, your mouth needs a pH of at least 5.5 for, for hydroxapatite or 4.5 for fluorapatite. You know, when I hear these names, I think about uh, Guns N' Roses' album, Appetite for Destruction, <laughs> although these appetites are for construction. I'm sure you've heard that calcium is good for your bones, and since teeth are bones, the same thing applies. Your saliva contains plenty of calcium but it also needs a high pH to operate. Well, hydroxapatite and fluorapatite do a much better and quicker job of returning minerals to the surface of your teeth. There are some hydroxapatite toothpastes available, but I would definitely talk to your dentist about these products because they might not be for you. Well, I'm learning more about dentistry than I ever thought was possible. I hope this has been beneficial to you as well and that you enjoyed this episode. It's definitely time for me to take action for the sake of my teeth, and I have a lot of questions for my dentist and hygienist. There are a lot of medical and chemical terms mentioned here, so you may want to check out the blog at runningafever.com 376 so you can Google them and maybe succeed in a future spelling bee. Until that time, if you've got the fever, keep it burning. If not, catch the fever, and I will talk to you next time on Running a Fever.